Today was an example of you never know what you're going to get as a wildlife photographer. My morning hot spots had produced nothing. As I started my evening walk along the trail searching, the best I was getting was the gorgeous sunset, which in itself is not too much to complain about. The only birds around were some waxwings that were pretty high up in the trees and way too far out to even try to get a shot of. Just about as soon as I'd resigned myself that the sunset and the peaceful snowscapes was going to be my only reward for the day, an explosion of bird cries and a flutter of wings erupted above me. And this was my reward. An amazing small falcon had managed to successfully catch a waxwing for his evening dinner, a merlin. Merlins are an amazing small and fierce falcon that feeds on small birds. They sometimes hunt in pairs and one will flush the wax wings while the other snags one in midair during the confusion. But it seems on this occasion this Merlin was able to catch one solo. There are three plumage variations of Merlins in North America. The Merlins of the northern forests are boreal and have a light blue tint to their back feathers. The northern prairie and aspen merlins are more pale brownish hue. And from the Pacific Northwest through Alaska, we have the black merlins with dark plumage. So about the rig I was running to capture this falcon. The merlin had flown to the top of a spruce tree, which close to 40 feet off the ground, and the closest I could get to the tree is about 60 to 70 yards, which means it was a long way off. So the best weapon for the job was the Canon R7 paired with the Canon EF500 F4 Mark II and the 1.4 Mark III extender, which puts me about 700 millimeters, and with the crop that works out to equivalent of 1,120 millimeters. Even with this much reach, the image required a little bit of crop and reframing for the picture and the stills a little less than 70% for the crop. There were no clouds, so the back room was a bit harsh blue. The sunlight falling was good, but not much else. So to note about detail and sharpness of this distance, just because you can toss out a large focal range, in this case 1100 millimeters, the distance and the atmospheric conditions will degrade the detail always at that distance. So don't expect to get every little feather edge detail as you'll be disappointed. It's just the way it is. Now the image will turn out okay, but it's not gonna be super detailed, just remember that. They're also interested in the fact that they don't build their own nest, rather they take over the nest of raptors, crows, or ravens. They also tend to use magpie nests, laying their eggs on top of the nest dome rather than laying it inside of the nest. It is always a treat to see these falcons when you watch them hunt across the wetlands flying wildly from side to side. It's always incredible. And today I got to watch this one sit on top of the spruce and enjoy his catch. So a little more about this little raptor. It's sometimes called the pigeon falcon due to the way it resembles a pigeon when it flies. And its name, Columbarian, if I'm saying that correctly, is also a reference to pigeons. The Merlin was also called by the falconers, the Lady Hawk, as noble women such as Mary Queen of Scots and Catherine the Great used the Merlins to hunt skylarks. Overall, all this just made my night, as I really thought this was going to be a low shutter count for the day, but turned out to be a super rare occasion event. I got some interesting video and some pretty decent Merlin images.
If you like this video and you're enjoying the channel and would like to help support the channel, click the join button on the channel page to become a member. It's as low as a dollar a month or just hit the super thanks button. This just helps us rent or buy equipment and just get to the locations to film the content. Again, thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, watch the video to the end and all those things. Until next time, stay safe and go run that shutter.